I have been a fan of Fate for basically as long as I've been making anime videos. I've loved all the different ideas explored, woven three stories filled with great action. Sure, some parts were better than others, but they all added to the overall experience of Fate. Like every route fleshed out the story differently, gave another look at the characters, which has twisted the ideas in their own unique way. But this final Heaven's Feel movie, it felt lackluster, which is really surprising. This was supposed to be the grand finale to the best route of fate, and that was, well, as I was watching it, I felt confused, a bit lost, and most of all, not engaged. Now, yes, maybe this was subjective, but from a subjective standpoint, I don't see why I would be in a mood to, like, not enjoy it. Also, spoilers here, because I have no idea how to talk about this without spoilers. Also, a couple spoilers for Khalid and Apocrypha. So yeah, let's start off with the action, because great action is standard for Euphotable, Fade, all that. And there's a lot of good looking action for sure. The pinnacle being the fight with Shiro and Ryder teaming up to take down Saber. And yeah, this was fun, but it ended up being overly flashy and hard to follow. So instead of drawing me in with how cool it looked, it ended up having the opposite effect of pulling me out when it was supposed to be one of the big moments of the movie. Though I think this is in part because I was watching on a big screen, so there's like so much to take in, and if I saw it on my computer, maybe it would be better. And I've seen it once, so second time I might enjoy it more. We'll see when it's actually available online. The other fights were fine, though less remarkable, but also less overly flashy, so they were good. I'll say they were good. Then taking a step back to the story itself, which is where my issues are, and it felt pretty standard. Like, I did not know exactly what would happen, but it unfolded how I expected it to. Uh, like you had Sakura going off, Shiro and Ren going to save her, some battles, and then they win. Basically, yes, more nuance there, but we'll get to that later. Though there wasn't any big surprises for me there, which is weird considering it's fate and there are always surprises and stuff. Another issue I had is that there are a lot of elements introduced that never got fleshing out. For example, they introduced Avenger, or whoever he is, I forgot his name, but with his backstory and how he corrupted the Grail during the Third Holy Grail War, and I felt like this implied a lot more backstory and context that was just cut from how they adapted it, but with the way they did it, it's like they needed an explanation and threw him in and he patched everything up. Then they introduced the whole Heaven's Feel magic, which I feel I only understood because I saw Apocrypha, and that was also a thing there. But then they didn't do anything with it, which is really weird because that's the tile of the route. Actually, they probably could have cut the Heaven's Feel magic entirely, and the story would have been better, but then the title would not make any sense at all. So, yeah, either way, they lose. Ilya's role was also another one that felt very glossed over. Like, she was there and important at times, but it felt like she was more of a plot device than a character. And I did like the couple scenes we got, like her relationship with Shiro, but it felt like it was never really developed. We got more development with her from uh, the Fate Route and from Unlimited Blade Works than we did here, which was kind of sad. Though, at least we still have the Fate Khalid for the Ilya Route. And I also don't get, like, what she did at the end. She showed up, made a big sacrifice, but how did that work? Why? Like, what was going on that made all that happen? So, yeah, disappointed there. And then there are other elements of the show that just did not make any sense. Like Carol, Ilya, and Shiro went back to a vision of the past so Shiro could get a look at that sword and so he could form a projection of it, which happened without really any explanation. It felt like it just happened, and then there's like, yeah, here are the events, they happen. And I'm like, why? How does that fit into everything else? Again, it's like an element they introduced for no real reason, though it did let Rin do some cool things, which was good to see. I like Rin's character, but it seems like she never gets much chance to shine on her own. It's always like Shiro comes in and saves her, or whatever. So I liked how she was fighting all of Sakura's, whatever those things were, because it was cool. She got a chance to shine and do awesome things, and like maybe take down the main villain, sort of. But then, no, she ended up not winning the fight, though kind of maybe because Sakura didn't really do much after that, but yeah. Fun times. Almost could have been really cool. And then the ending of the movie itself. It felt too happy, sort of. You have Ilya's sacrifice, but other than that, the characters all got a happy ending. 
Like, Rin and Sakura have a good relationship now. Shira comes back. We'll get back to that later. And it feels like this all cheapens the dark storytelling the rat was trying to go for. It also doesn't feel right for Sakura to kill all those people and then just move on without any sort of consequences. Though you could say it was her being corrupted by her family in the shadow and all that, but then that takes away from her being the person doing it if it's not her doing it. So, like, it was just another villain and not her, which that also cheapens the character. I'm sure there's some nuance here explored in the visual novel, but it wasn't in the anime, and that is what I'm reviewing. It also feels like Shiro's choice to save Sakura at the expense of everything else didn't have the power it should have. Because by saving Sakura, he did save everyone else. Fate is all about the ideas of being a hero of justice and how that requires making sacrifices. But that wasn't here. In fact, Khalid did this a whole lot better. In Khalid, Shiro condemned his entire world to save Miyu. He became the world's villain to save the one thing he cared about. And yes, it does seem like by him doing so, he set off a chain of events that will eventually lead to his world saved. But when he made that choice, he had no reason to have hope for his world. But in Heaven's Field, Shiro busted in, beat Saber, punched Kirei in the face, and saved Sakura and everyone else. I guess you could sort of see Shiro killing Saber as him sacrificing Saber to save Sakura, but that wasn't really explored, and all things considered, it made perfect logical sense. He also didn't have the relationship with Saber built up in this route as he did in the Fate route especially. Though, when you watch Heaven's Feel, it assumes you've seen the others, so I guess you could say that was implied, but yeah, wasn't as good as I hoped. Then, back to the ending. How did Shiro come back? There's that box, and they went to the store, and then Shiro was there? It's one thing to have a main character get like a miraculous save at the last minute, as long as they have some explanation for it. But here, there's no apparent reason or logic. In fact, they could have made the ending work better if Shiro had died for good, showing how Sakura and Gren are closer, but they lost Shiro. They're still dealing with that loss, but trying to live the best that they can. But no, it's like they are living, Shiro's there, and yay, Shiro's there. Now, I know I am being a bit harsh on the movie, which is somewhat unfair. As a finale to an action fantasy anime, it was okay. But Fate as a whole is much more than okay. It's one of my favorite franchises ever. So to end the mainline franchise in such a way is a disappointment. Now, a lot of this, I'm sure, could be explained if you've read the visual novel or read through the wiki. But I've intentionally avoided the wiki up until making this video because I should not have to read something to make sense of what I just saw. If I need to do so, then the anime failed at being an anime. And yes, I do welcome explanations. Please give them down below. I want to see them because I'm curious. But the explanations will not change my opinion on the anime itself because it should stand on its own apart from the source material. So yes, that has been my review of rant about the third Heaven's Feel movie. I wonder how many dislikes this is going to get. And just when I thought it might hit 500 subs by the end of the year. Anyway, thank you for watching, for listening to me rant, and I will talk to you all next time.